Hello there, people of the internet. Let me adjust this camera here a little bit. Hello there, people of the internet. I have a view that I'm sure people will find controversial. I myself do not find it controversial, but I'm sure that people out there will in fact find it controversial. Um, I would rather take an obsolete design that has readily available ammunition over a much more modern design that has wildcat ammunition or some obscure ammunition. Some ammunition that you are likely not going to find in the event that something happens. Like uh, the AR platform chambered in 6.5 Grendel. I think it's a really good option and I think it's a lot of fun and it gets a lot... I mean, it's... For, <laughs> for an AR platform in a 6.5 caliber, it is like a fantastic, fantastic caliber. The 6.5 Grendel is a lot of fun and it's very effective for what it was designed to do. But you're not going to come across 6.5 Grendel very easily in the event that the world ends. You're more likely going to come across 7.62 NATO or 308 or 223 or 762 by 39 or 54 rimmed or something like that. Something that is far more popular than a uh, 6.5 Grendel, despite the fact that the AR platform that you have in 6.5 Grendel is a much better uh, firearms system to have than what would be running some of these other calibers uh, if you don't have the ammunition to run it then hey you're better off just basically using it as a big paperweight so i'm out here i have my spanish avito mauser chambered in 762 nato that's exactly what this right here is and i can honestly say that i would rather have this right here than something that is chambered in some wildcat caliber that is a modern design that I can't use because I've you know used the ammunition that I had with it or I can't find ammunition or whatever the hell is going on that prevents me from finding ammunition 762 NATO technically this is a 762 semi rifle but he fires 762 NATO ammunition just fine uh, 762 NATO ammunition is incredibly easy to find like it is there's so much surplus of 762 NATO and it's being produced, you know, modern day by the absolute freaking cargo ship load. I was going to say truck load, but that is not near the amount. But 7.62 NATO is absolutely uh, an available round. You can 110% you can find it all over the place. And if you are in a situation where uh, things go wrong and you have some crap hitting the fan, uh, having a bolt action rifle in 7.62 NATO is going to be better than having an AR in 458 or an AR in 350 or some some sort of system where you would have a much better weapons platform chambered in some unobtainium cartridge in the world ending event. I would rather have the obsolete technology with ammunition that I can actually run for dealing with whatever it is that I'm going to deal with. Now, if I had like my AR in 6.5 Grendel and I had like 5,000 rounds of 6.5 Grendel on standby, I would absolutely use that 5,000 rounds of 6.5 Grendel before I end up, you know, deciding to ditch that AR to uh, start running one of my rifles that are more obsolete, but I actually have ammunition for. In that time of using the 6.5 Grendel, I would be gathering ammunition and, you know, what not necessary to run this rifle or potentially picking up some rifle. I mean, I, I have no idea what the situation is, but potentially picking up some rifle in some caliber that is much more readily available, like maybe an AK-74 I find laying around somewhere. Who the hell knows what the situation is? And I find a big old crate of 5.45 ammunition, and now all of a sudden I have this far more viable rifle than this bolt action rifle right here but if i was going into some sort of situation if like let's say something happened and i had to like leave immediately like let's say i was under fire and i had to just like bail out of my house right now like immediately getting a car and go you are running for your life because you are being fired upon and i had like two rifles right in front of me i had this thing sitting on like my bed or something i don't know i'm coming up with hypothetical situations here i had this thing sitting on my bed chambered in 762 nato and i had a 65 grendel ar or like a 
I don't know, insert some obscure caliber and some modern rifle here. I would take this right here, just in a flash grab, I would, I would grab this right here because of its ammunition availability rather than grab the AR in some obscure caliber even though that or they would probably be the better fighting rifle than this one right here but I would I could actually use this one 7.62 NATO is an ammunition that it doesn't matter if I have ammo with the rifle or not wherever it is that I end up going I'm sure that I can find 7.62 NATO ammunition and if it's the end of the world then you're probably not going to be able to go online and order some 6.5 Grendel to be shipped to wherever it is that you are wanting it shipped. I mean, maybe you can, I don't know. Who the hell knows what's gonna happen whenever the world actually ends. I know I don't, and I'm fairly certain that you don't either, so there's really no telling. But I do know 7.62 NATO ammunition can be found, and I do know that although this rifle is a bolt-action rifle, I got plenty of stripper clips with it, and I got bandoliers that I can use to carry ammunition. Uh, 7.62 NATO is a very potent, potent powerful round. Uh, it is definitely capable of handling whatever it is that I'm looking to handle. Uh, it can be used for hunting basically anything here in the United States or in this half of the world, essentially, uh, depending on shot placement and whatnot. I mean, you can do a lot with this rifle, and if this turns into, like, your survival rifle, then there's worse ways to go than a rifle chambered in 7.62 NATO, especially if you are not using it for combat purposes. This right here would be a very good way to go. I could survive quite well with something like this if I was in a non-combat situation and basically just hiding. I was out here and I was going to fire off a couple of rounds before it got too terribly dark with this 7.62 NATO rifle. But we got a bunch of cows that are off in that direction and I don't necessarily want to hit a cow <laughs> with my rifle. Uh, it's not exactly the end of the world right now, and hitting a cow would be expensive. So I'm going to go ahead and play it safe and not send any lead down range. But let me know what you guys' thoughts are down below as to whether or not a uh, you would take an obsolete rifle with ammunition over a modern rifle without ammunition, with the potential of maybe being able to find something down the road. I mean, 6.5 Grendel isn't exactly an unobtainium cartridge. But in a combat situation, in an end of the world situation, the likelihood of you finding 6.5 Grendel is pretty damn minuscule compared to other rifle calibers out there. I'd be able to find a lot more 7.62 NATO ammunition than I ever would uh, 6.5 Grendel. So that's just one of the things that I was thinking about. And that's one of the things I wanted to make a video on. All right, well, I'm going to see if I can wait for those cows to leave. And if I get the opportunity to, I'll go ahead and put some lead down range. But if I don't get the opportunity to, I'll go ahead and end the video right here. Uh, thanks for watching, folks. Subscribe to the channel. Like the video. Description down below has a link to all sorts of stuff. Go ahead and go check that out. And I'm just basically going to hang out here and see if those cows decide to wander one way or the other. You guys go off. Have yourself a fantastic day. All right. The cows have moved that way. And I feel quite confident that I can make shots at my target without actually hitting them. All right, so here's the dilemma that I am in, right? My target is right there. The cows are literally right freaking there. And they don't seem to be wanting to go anywhere. So I'm just going to assume that they're not going to go anywhere. So instead of <laughs> risking shooting a cow by firing in that direction, I'm going to go ahead and just bury these rounds into the car right there. We're going to change our angle right here to right about there. I don't have a berm set up yet, but I still have like a long way. Uh, like we got a tree line right here, a second tree line, a third tree line all the way in the back. So I think I'll be fine. I'm just going to go ahead and put these rounds. We don't have anybody out there. Nobody's been out there for a very long time. We did have people tearing down trees out there, so I didn't want to go firing in that direction. But they appear to be done because there's been literally no movement out there for quite some time. And uh, it's freaking 9 o'clock at night at this point and getting dark. There's no one out there. But just to play it safe, I'm going to just put these rounds directly like into the trunk of this car to where they're not even going to go through this freaking car. So I'm going to have absolutely nothing to worry about. Let's go ahead and move you guys like right here approximately. I would move the steel over there and shoot it, but 
I don't want trajectory from the round to risk going off in some direction. I want the rounds to stay inside of the car, and I don't want them to, <laughs> to go anywhere. But in the event that one of the rounds does somehow make it through this freaking car, the 762 NATO full metal jacket, if it does make it through this freaking car, which it probably won't since I'm firing at the trunk, going through a firewalling everything, it would have to make it through probably about two miles of land and three different tree lines. I should be fine. My concern was while we had people out there, I was concerned, but now there's nobody out there. So let's just send some lead into the car. I bet we're going to see some fireballs too coming out of the muzzle of this thing. <laughs> well, that was cool. How long has it been since we shot the car? It's been a little while, right guys? I'm going to go for the engine block. And I'm going to go for, I'm either going to do the trunk or the engine block. I'm not going to shoot where the doors are because the bullets will go through that area. But I've tested it. They're not going through the damn firewalling either of those. Let's go back for the trunk. Not that it matters. I'm just burying lead into the vehicle. Did I mention that I only had three rounds of ammunition in that rifle? I think I did. If I didn't, then hey, I'm mentioning it now. Uh, I fired off two rounds into a dirt pile in that direction in hopes that the cows would run off from the loud noise, but they were completely unaffected by it, so. Oh well. Now I just have to worry about the cows. What I actually have to do is I gotta put up a freaking berm behind this thing. I would really like to do that so I can get back to using my range properly. But that will be at a later point in time. So, I fired off a couple of rounds. It wasn't very eventful, but I just kind of buried some lead into the car over there. Uh, not exactly according to plan, but sometimes videos just aren't. Let me know what you guys' thoughts are down below, and it's dark. It's like getting dark, dark. Uh, I don't know how it's going to pick up on camera, but I can barely see my house at this point. So, thanks for watching, folks. You guys go off, have yourself a fantastic day. I'm going to head back home, and whiskey. I'm going to head back home and whiskey. Bye, guys. I've done this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs> the poor man's Garrett. <laughs> Shame that bolt-action shotguns aren't uh, more mainstream.